The following podcast is a presentation of Project Entertainment Network. Welcome to the Sample Chapter Podcast, the show where authors read a sample chapter from one of their books. Here's your host, Jason A. Meiske. Hello, my friends. Welcome to episode 113 of the Sample Chapter Podcast. Hey, this week we have one heck of an informative show for you, coming to you in the form of our guest author, presenter, and nutritional guru, Trisha Silverman. Trisha Silverman is here to discuss her new book, Healthy Dividends, Investments in Nutrition, Movement, and Healthy Habits That Pay Off. And let me tell you, this is one of those conversations that I just didn't want it to end. I was, it's like the more I learned about her book and about her, the more questions I had, the more things I wanted to, to say, you know, and pick her brain on this and that. But, you know, nonetheless, she still gives us a bunch of, you know, great snacks, um, you know, what to eat you know, during these times, you know, because we're all home right now. And I wanted to nail her down on that specifically. Hey, now that we're all here, trapped at home, so to speak, for the next few weeks, what can we do to stay healthy? And she gives us the, the smackdown or the lowdown or whatever you want to say. And you know, just kind of gives us a bunch of tips on that. Another one of her great tips that she gave is uh, something that I believe in, which is drink water when you're hungry. Because you may not actually be hungry. You might just be dehydrated. And too often we mistake that as you know being, uh, being hungry. And so we go and grab something else to eat. So, and also one of her recommendations is to reach out to others and, you know, keep in touch with those in need because these are trying times on all of us. You know, she's got so much great information and we're going to have all that and so much more coming up in just a few minutes. Hey, don't forget that you can follow the show on our social media. Uh, it's just the Sample Chapter Podcast on both Facebook and Twitter. Hey, whatever your podcast platform of choice is, I ask that you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future episodes uh, because we do have a new author and a new book every week reading an, a sample chapter from that. And uh, we are wide on a ton of different platforms, be that uh, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. Uh, oh man, it goes on and on and on, even YouTube. Wherever you like to ingest this show, I invite you to hit that subscribe button and let me know. Let me know that you're listening because I know people are listening and what's really fun is to pull up the map and I can see people all over the world listening to the show. And I'm talking to you, all the people in France. Uh, you guys have been downloading the show big time lately. So to all of you over there, thank you so much. Uh, I, I would be terrible at trying to, you know, here, let me try this. Hey, Google. How do I say thank you in French? In French, that's merci. Merci. You know what? I knew that. Why did I ask Google? All right. Well, so there we go. <laughs> if you're in France, merci. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you uh, following the show and all the downloads that you have. Uh, Germany, which is actually my ancestral home. A bunch of, uh, bunch of my old ancestors came here to America from Germany back, I think, about 150 years ago. Germany's been downloading the show a lot here lately, so all of you in Germany, thank you. And you know what? I, I've already done this once. Hey, Google, how do I say thank you in German? In German, that's danke. <laughs> danke. And I knew that too. Doggone it. Oh, man. I'm just sometimes I can't think and talk at the same time. <laughs> so everybody in Germany, danke. I really appreciate you listening to the show. But, you know, that goes also for everybody out there around the world. Thank you for listening to the show and finding some value. I hope and pray that you are finding authors that interest you, uh, new books that you want to go out and get. And don't forget to leave a review when you do find a book that you enjoy. And, uh, you know, you can help that author by sharing that episode, by leaving them a review. I also hope that wherever you are in the world, that you are healthy, number one, and that you're happy. And, you know, if you're in quarantine, I hope that uh, you're able to find ways to make the most of this right now. Find that silver lining and make the most of it. One of the things I want to encourage you 
is to, you know, take this moment. If you've ever considered writing a book, do that. Write that book right now. Um, our sponsor, Scrivener, has agreed with me that this is not the time for us to end our partnership. We have decided that we're going to continue offering the 20% discount on Scrivener through June. So, and this, I get nothing for this, uh, other than the satisfaction that there are people out there who might be writing their very first book, who might be looking at, you know, getting serious about their writing and they're wanting to get some software like Scrivener. This is your opportunity to save some money, write that book, and then contact me. Let me know that you, you have a book and you want to come on the show. So, you know, listen up for that ad. I tell you what, I'm going to play the ad right now. Jason here. Hey, I wanted to take a moment and tell you about my favorite writing tool, Scrivener. Now, I know you've heard about Scrivener because their writing software has been embraced by hundreds of thousands of other writers like you and I, from the novice to best-selling novelists. The reason we all use it is because of Scrivener's core concept to bring all the writing tools you use together in a single application. And with tools like automatic backup, character maps, project goals, and let's not forget that amazing cork board, you can see why I use Scrivener every day. As a bonus for Sample Chapter Podcast listeners, use code CHAPTER for 20% off your desktop version. Scrivener Writing Software, built by writers for writers. All right. So that, that was our ad for Scrivener, and as you heard, it's a 20% discount if you use the code word CHAPTER. You can do that right now, and well, not right now. Listen to this episode first. Listen to Tricia. <laughs> it's a great episode. But afterwards, uh, go get her book, then go and get Scrivener, so that way you can write your own book and come on this show, because I invite all of you to reach out to me and let me know that you want to come on. Hey, how do you reach out to me, by the way? Uh, so reach out to me through the email at samplechapterpodcast at gmail.com. That is the best way to reach out to me. Of course, you can always send me a message through uh, Facebook or Twitter. Those get a little wonky sometimes, so I prefer the email uh, there on Gmail. But, uh, you know, any of those, we'll, we'll make it work. Just reach out to me. So for me personally, uh, I am still one of those who is, is working. Late last week, Missouri uh, enacted the uh, stay-at-home order. And I thought, oh, okay, great. You know, so I guess uh, I'm finally going to get a chance to be the fully quarantined person at home, just like you know most of my family is. But what this has done is it's actually opened up the opportunity for uh, to allow me to get projects done outside that we've been putting off for a long time. Because, uh, you know, I had surgery last year. I had the injury in August and then uh, had surgery in November. And uh, it just kind of a lot of things that I would normally be responsible for. We've had to put off a lot of these projects. Uh, some of these are projects that, you know, they're just things that over the years that we needed to do but didn't have the time. And suddenly we have the time because we don't have to be in the office anymore. And um, the manager is able to stay home and work a virtual office. So now I'm doing things outside. All that to say that I'm still working. thought I would have more free time to do more writing. But uh, as it is, I'm still struggling right now just to find some time to sit down. Uh, when I can get myself an hour or two, I can sit down and knock out another chapter on Novel Idea and get that ready to go. And uh, all I can say for sure is I'm shooting to have the book up this month. That's what I really, really want. Speaking of available, if you've ever been interested in my first book, Nine Mile Bridge, uh, the story about the haunted bridge, I actually read from that back in episode 13, which was a lot of fun. My daughters interviewed me for the show. Uh, but if you've ever been interested in that, in the spirit of raising more interest about my book and because everybody is quarantined and you're home looking for something to do, this week I'm giving the book away for free, for Kindle. So if you go on Amazon, you look up Nine Mile Bridge, and it's the only book in there. There's two books called Nine Mile Bridge, but look for the one for Jason, and it's got a haunted-looking bridge on there. <laughs> and it's, it's free on Kindle for this week. That is April 6th through the 10th. It's five days only, and... You know, I just want you all to have something else to read. And of course, 
it's always available on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have a Kindle Unlimited account, you can download it. Even if you hear this episode in the future and you missed out, you can still go back and get that. Anyway, enough of me talking about myself. Let's go ahead and talk about our sponsors and, and friends like you store all. If you are looking for self-storage in the Warrensburg, Missouri area, look no further than you store all. They have two facilities, both climate control and non-climate control, fully fenced with your own private gate code, more than 60 cameras recording 24 hours a day, and they are well lit all night long with LED lighting. Not only that is it a uh, clean energy with the LED, but it's also green because both facilities are run off solar power. So check them out online at ustoral.net. That's spelled the letter U-S-T-O-R-A-L-L dot net. Of course, I want to say a great big thank you to uh, one of our networks, popgoestoculture.com. Those guys are so much fun over there, and they have been having a lot of fun with the quarantine. Uh, I've mentioned in past episodes they normally meet together at the Alamo Drafthouse Theater in Springfield, Missouri, But given the circumstances, they can't do that. So now they're experimenting with the show on uh, different meetups online and recording that. And they're actually recording a lot of episodes now uh, doing things this way because, you know, everybody's home and looking for things to do. And they are having a blast. So make sure you get on over to popgoesterculture.com and check out uh, their flagship show, Pop Goes Your Culture Podcast, and all the other shows like mine that they share week in and week out. Not only that, but there's blogs and other things for you to check out. Everything you're looking for, pop culture related. And then, of course, there's the new to me network, Project Entertainment Network. Gosh, they have about 25 shows now on their docket. A lot of writing related and a lot that are not writing related. So many shows to uh, to look at. You have Bazong. Uh, there is Matters of Faith. There is the uh, Monster Attack and uh, your inner opinion, just to name a few. Of course, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, also mention some of my favorite ones, which is Mondo Method and Armcast. But there's so many great shows on there on the network, uh, just like the one you're about to hear. And then we're going to get on over to our interview with Trisha Silverman right after this. Mystery, suspense, action, adventure. What are you in the mood for? We have that. A Glint of Mischief is a weekly podcast where we read the first chapter of an indie published book. So sit back and let us help you find your next favorite book. Stop by glintofmischief.com to see what all we have done. Or check us out on iTunes or Google Play to just dive in and enjoy. Until next time, see you around. Hello, Sample Chapter listeners. Hey, welcome back to another exciting episode. This week we are sitting down with presenter, author, and nutrition guru, Trisha Silverman. Trisha is a registered dietitian, certified wellness coach, and a certified personal trainer. She now owns Trisha Silverman Wellness, based in Massachusetts, which specializes in high-energy, fun, and informative wellness programs. Trisha, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jason. I'm really, really excited to be here. I love your podcast, and this is just so (laughs) simple talking to you right now. Oh, bless your heart. That's so nice of you to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, now tell us a little bit, uh, a little bit about how you're doing. You're up in Massachusetts. Uh, How's it going up there? Well, it's interesting right now. Um, We haven't reached our peak of this virus yet here, so it's not like New York um, yet. Hopefully it won't be, um, but it is expected to have an uptick over the next month, and when that will be is a little uncertain uncertain right now. So we're just all hanging in there and trying to distance ourselves physically but not socially we're trying to stay in touch with everyone socially um but stay physically distanced stay in our homes and um and and just do our best not to um to spread the virus if we have it yeah yeah and i mean you're in a particular field that not to pick one over another but i i know this field's been hit especially hard. Uh, all the gyms are closed. I mean, do, yeah. how is this? How's it going for you? 
Well, for me personally, I'm okay because I've taken a lot of my business online. I've been teaching at Northeastern University online since 2008. So, uh, you know, I teach some courses there. So I'm, I'm fortunate to have that. And then I've, um, I, I do some, I do phone coaching and I'm lucky that I've been able to do, um, a, a certification online for a fitness company. And I've able, been able to do a couple of webinars and an article for an employee wellness company. So, uh, you know, I continue to, um, just work with my current customers in, in new ways. And some of the customers or, you know, clients that I work with in the ways we've been working with for a while, but my heart does go out to my friends in the fitness industry because many people have very quickly lost their jobs and their sources of income. And, you know, many people live paycheck to paycheck and now there's just no money at all. And it's uh, very scary. So my heart does go out to everyone that's listening and my friends in fitness that have have lost their jobs. But the you know, the, the silver lining to it is that many of these people are now learning new technologies. They're learning to master Zoom and Facebook Live and getting themselves online. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that I see them doing that. Yeah, yes, that, that, that's for sure. This is definitely. You know, you got to find a silver lining. You got to find yeah. how you're going to get through all this. And that's something I, I've been seeing as well. A lot of people are discovering new ways. Uh, I, I mean, sure, there's probably a good number of us out there that are opening up a bag of chips and we're watching Netflix all day. But hopefully not everybody's doing that or after a week of it, that's got to get tiring. So you got to get yeah. up and get active. And uh, it's good to see so many people discovering new things to do, whether it's writing a book or learning a, a new skill at home with their kids or uh, or maybe even learning an exercise routine uh, online. Exactly. There's so many fun things to tap into now. You can take virtual vacations, such as going to the Guggenheim in New York City. You can see the Grand Canyon on the National Park Service's website. So there's some really cool, fun things that you can do to just kind of really still feel like you're out there experiencing the world. And then in, you know, within the book world, if you love books, there's uh, Goodreads is really a great place to go to that no, not a lot of people know about. I mean, we do in the author industry, a lot of people know about Goodreads, but it's a great place to network socially to learn about what other books are out there. And then many libraries have um, Hoopla or Overdrive where you can take out ebooks. You can listen to them as audiobooks or just read the ebooks and you can download the viewers. So it's, um, it, it's a really a, a good time to explore some wonderful learning opportunities. And if you're online, there's so many free webinars and free opportunities to learn right now. So I think it's a great time to maybe develop a new purpose and, and look for a new hobby or something new to learn or start that book that you've been thinking about. I strongly believe that everyone has a book in them. Oh, gosh, yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole purpose for, for this show, in fact, is – if you write a book, you know, what are you going to do with it next? Well, bring it here. I'll help you get the word out about it. That, that's, uh. that's what I want to do with this. And I couldn't agree with you more about discovering new worlds, which is very much what it feels like when you start to open up. Uh, well, like you said, when you wrote your book, when your book came out in October, you're looking for other things. And here's Goodreads. Well, what is this? And it's, oh, my gosh, what is this? And I've discovered so many new authors that, I never knew about it. I just found out about Goodreads myself, uh, oh gosh, eight, nine years ago. And now I just, I love it. And uh, I share some, I've been starting to share episodes of the show on there as well. And right. it, it's incredible when we're so used to our own lives and that lane that we're in, that when you look into the next lane over and you discover something completely new, what, what's it been like for you in the author world? In the author world, it's um, been such a huge learning curve. What I found that has been most helpful to me is listening to podcasts. And that, that's really how I have become connected to you through just listening to how to write a book, how to market a book, and listening to people like Joanna Penn. She's one of my favorite podcast um, authors and entrepreneurs to 
to listen to and then and then finding other new podcasts. That's how I found Quill and Ink and how I got um, learned about Mickey, who now um, Mickey is my publicist. And I, I never would have found all these wonderful and then Mickey connected me to you. So I never would have found all these fascinating people. Like you said, it's a whole different lane when you become an author and it, it's it's opened up a whole new world. I'm learning about. So right now I'm on Amazon, but through listening to Joanna Penn and Brian Cohen, I've learned things like, oh, there's other ways to go wide with your book and you can go on Kobo and there's all these other avenues to sell your book. You can get it translated. So, you know, before I did all this, I just thought like, oh, I need to, you know, get a book out there. And now I realize, oh, there's once you have a book, there's so many ways to market it and and then write new books and use those books to fuel your old books. It, it's just, it's an, it's so amazing and fascinating and, and I just love learning. So it's been a, um, a, a great experience being a new author. I'm still such a newbie, but I'm fascinated by everything that's, that's out there. Yeah. Well, and, and you're do, going about the right way from what I can tell from my own personal experience is just get that first book done and get it out there. And, the things you learn after that and, and putting it out there, it's, I would say <laughs> it looks like your book is much more professional than what my first book was. My first book, my wife you know, wanted to slap me upside the head because I just quickly put <laughs> it out there. And then she was like, oh, my gosh, what did you do? Like, this is not ready. And I had to pull it down, edit real fast, do, do some better editing and then put it back up again. Uh, whereas your book seems to have been, it, it's, uh, as they say, ready for prime time. Well, thank you. What what I did, I tried to learn Create Space a few years back, and I would find that I would learn a little bit about Create Space, and then I would get sucked back into my you know regular job, and then I would forget what I learned, and then I would go back and try to learn it, and I forgot, and then Create Space changed into KDP, so all that learning wasn't good any you know anymore. So I found a group that I hired that. They help people self-publish their books. So they helped from strategy to interior design to the book cover to getting it up onto Amazon. And uh, they get got me an editor. And that really helped me. So without that, it would I would have gotten it done, but we might we probably wouldn't be speaking right now. I don't you know, it might be two years from now or three years, but having them helped me along because there, there were deadlines involved and it, it just, it, it, it worked for me. So that was, um, you know, so helpful to, uh, to do that. So what was the thought process behind creating a book in the first place uh, with, you've got your uh, wellness training and personal training that you do and then going online was it just kind of the natural next progression for you, you think, to put a book together about all of this, or, or what went into that? Well, I always felt like there was a book in me, always, uh, it just for years. I, I thought it might be a memoir years ago, and that might be to come at, at some point. But I always felt like I wanted to, to share, and I love to learn and then teach about what what I learn. And then... I started learning years ago that for me in my speaking career, for my career to pro progress and to be considered a thought leader and an expert, you have to have a book to really get to the next level in your speaking. And it, I started a book. I shopped it around to agents years ago, and they wanted to really take my book and turn it into something else completely. And I didn't like that. So I kind of sat on it for a while and then I realized, let me self publish it and then I could really do what I want with the book. And that's when I found that self publishing group and we talked about strategy, but they didn't take me on a complete different lane like the, the agents wanted to do. Um, so I, I felt like the book was more true to me to get this book out in, in my way. And I'm really happy I did that because I have control now. And, you know, like you said, you made mistakes in the beginning along the way. I've made mistakes too. And you just, 
you really just learn from those mistakes. And it, it, I look at everything like a growth opportunity, not, even, not a failure. If I make a mistake, it's an opportunity to learn and to grow from. And, um, so I just keep learning and, um, you know, it'll make the next book much easier when that one comes out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, now where does the name healthy dividends come from? Well, the name healthy dividends, I, I would always talk to my, um, the people that attend my programs and I teach a lot of employee wellness and I teach at conferences, um, for a fitness company across the country and another company in Canada. I always start with, you know, you're spending your time here with me. Um, it's an investment in your time and I want you to get dividends on that, on that investment. So that's something that, that I commonly say that I've been saying for years. And that, and at the end, you know, so think about what you learned. I want you to get dividends on that investment in time. And I, I thought it would be nice to kind of tie that in. I want people to read the book and then get dividends from it. Not like you read a book and you just tuck it away. I want them to read my book and live longer from it and learn how to cut back their sugar and learn from the stories and put that to work so that the payoff is that they'll live longer and happier and health and more healthfully. If you think about living longer, it's not just living longer. Um, it, it's about living with really optimal health and vitality so that when you're in your 90s, you're still walking around and enjoying life, meeting people. So I wrote about two of those people in my book that I just think were, you know, really lovely examples of living to your 90s and over 100 and still thriving. I want to live that way and I want to be excited and and just living to my fullest in, in my 90s and 100. So I want to share what I've learned with other people about how to live a long, healthy life. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, yes. And I'm excited, too, because the book is, it is available for Kindle at only 99 cents. So, yeah, it's going in my cart right now well, as we they, speak. I'm... It... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I, I'm keeping that price low for, for different reasons. One is that I'm a new author. I just really want to get the word out, and I don't want to, I don't want barriers to my book. I want people to buy it and see what they think and write reviews about it. And, you know, at some point I was thinking I would raise it, but now, you know, many of my friends, they don't have jobs now. So I, I, I want to, and, and many people, not just my friends. So I want to keep it as low as on Amazon. The lowest you can keep it for paperback for my type of book is $8.49. So the paperback is $8.49 and I'm keeping the ebook at $0.99. Cents. And I feel like there's so much more value to it than $0.99, cents, but you, you can't go you can't go wrong. It's a buck. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, so, all right, so what are we going to expect whenever we open up the book and we start reading through? What, what's the reader going to expect from the book? So they're going to expect concrete nutritional information. So just in general, what should we eat to be healthy? So they'll get some really good, helpful general nutrition information that's clearly written. They're going to get stories in there. And then they're going to get tips that they might not have heard about before and see things from a different perspective. I've written about in the appendix, I, I went into detail about longevity cultures. So these are cultures across the world, as I mentioned, where people live really long lives. And and you might have read the Blue Zones and heard about the Mediterranean region. Um, you may have heard about Okinawa, but you probably haven't heard about Abkhazia or Vilcabamba or Hunza. Hunza is in northern, Pakis, uh, northern Pakistan and Abkhazia is in the former Soviet Union and Vilcabamba is in Ecuador, and these are other areas of longevity that aren't really talked about much, but I talked about them in, in my book to learn about what are they doing there that we can do, and one of those things is eating lots of vegetables, and right now, that's one of the best things we can all do to protect our immune systems is to eat a lot of vegetables. Oh, my goodness. All right, you're, you're speaking to the choir as somebody who... I went through most of my childhood and even early adult life not eating vegetables. I'm very much meat and potatoes kind of guy, mm -hmm. uh, junk food and whatever. And it's only been <laughs> only been since I turned 40, uh, mm -hmm. eight years ago, that I started finally like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm I feel like an adult. I should probably grow up and start eating right. And uh, I, 
all of a sudden, like yesterday, I'm eating spinach for the first time ever, and eating some of these other vegetables, and I feel better. See? Yes. That's the message we just want to get out to people, that you feel better when you eat good. So that's really, and I feel it's never too late to change your eating habits. Whether you're 10, 20, 30, 50, 80, it's never too late. So it's it's really great that eight years ago you started on this journey. Yeah, I, what I've learned, uh, come to learn is uh, just just coming to listen to my body. When I eat something and how it makes me feel, if I'm bloated afterwards or you know, if I've sat down and absentmindedly eaten a bag of M&Ms and then I feel like crud for the next two days, well, there's probably a reason for that. And yeah. just, just listening to my body has been a huge difference maker for me. Yeah, that's so important, and many people don't realize that. I remember reading in a parade magazine, Drew Carey, you know him, the comedian, mm-hmm. he's Price is Right. I remember him explaining that he never realized that he was under this cloud for years, and when he started to eat healthy, he felt like the cloud lifted. And many people don't realize until they eat healthy that they're under that cloud. You just don't know, and then when you start eating healthy, it's like a new awakening. Like, oh, wow, I could have felt like this all my life. I didn't know I was even under that cloud. So that, when I read that article about him, that um, it was just very interesting to me to to see it that way. But he 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 did a good service for other people to explain it like that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I I I really like him. My my wife got to meet him once over in the Middle East when she was deployed. Um. Okay, so let me see here. What Before I let you go and get into your uh, reading, I think I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, considering our current situation, so everybody's staying at home now for the next, right. you know, almost another month, I'd say at least. Right. What can we do to be healthier in this time? What kind of little tips can you give us? I have, I have lots of tips for that. Um, there, there's definitely things you can do to support a healthy immune system. So the first one is eat a variety of healthy foods. So try to get different colors of the rainbow. When you eat vegetables, think about, and fruits, different colors of the, of the rainbow are really important. And this is not the time to be on the keto diet. So you, you need to eat fruit to support your immune system. Um, so I don't believe in that, that diet really ever, but especially this time you want to eat fruit, um, and your vegetables. So variety of, of foods. And in that variety, you want to make sure that you're getting vegetables, fruit, protein rich foods like beans and fish, chicken and turkey. You want to limit the red meat. Um, if you do dairy, go low fat. If you're buying dairy, notice that the organic milk will last you longer. So maybe buy organic milk so you can limit your, your shopping trips. Try to make the food you buy last till the end of the week so you don't have to go on too many shopping trips. So maybe that's getting some winter squash for the end of the week, like a butternut squash. Cabbage will, you can, that's something you could cook up toward the end of the week or carrots or parsnips. So it's a time to try new vegetables too. And then make sure you're getting healthy anti-inflammatory fats like extra virgin olive oil and avocado and nuts and, and seeds. And then stay hydrated. Really, really important. There's a lot of buzz going on now about drinking lemon water. Um, lemon has vitamin C. So I think, you know, why not? Um, but staying hydrated is really important. Um, how do we know if we're hydrated? Look at your urine. Um, if it's too dark, you want it to be pale yellow. So drink more, drink more water. And then you want to get adequate sleep. Um, so seven to nine hours. Limit your alcohol because that can interfere with the restorative properties of sleep. Um, so you want to, if you are drinking, try to cut it off three hours before bed. Try to limit your, your alcohol. Um, and then we want to move. If you move outside, um, that's, there's research out of Japan on forest bathing, and that means basically just taking your hikes in the woods. There are compounds that can help to boost your immune system that come off of the trees and vegetation in the woods. And then a few more things, limit junk food and limit sugar. Sugar can work against your immune system. So try to keep your sugar, not the sugar in fruit, we're talking the added sugar, um, keep that 
keep that really low. And if you can avoid it, that would be great. And then um, a few more quick things. Have a positive attitude. Stay connected to your family and friends. It's a good time to learn Zoom or other like Skype. So, you know, ways that you can connect and see people, FaceTime, um, maintain a healthy weight, um, stretch and be mindful, move your body a lot. And then um, there's some immune, other immune boosting foods like oats and bone broth, mushrooms. There are interesting foods that are uh, out there that um, are known as immune, immune boosters, but the general the best thing to do is eat the rain, eat a rainbow, look for lots of produce. Oh, wonderful. Oh my gosh. So many things are, I, I know I'm going to be going back and listening to this over and over again, writing down the tips and I I've just purchased the book. So I'm going to be reading through that as well and sharing it with my wife. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. This has been Thank you, Jason. incredible. <laughs> Thank you. And I gave you, that was like the shorthand. I could talk about that for nine <laughs> minutes. So I was trying to keep it like to the point. But that's um those are really important points and I talk about those in in the book. So um you know if you want to learn more about those the the book goes into detail and um and you'll learn more about the different food groups that support good health. Oh my gosh, yes, wonderful, wonderful. Where can people find and follow you? They can find me I I the main social media place where where I interact is my personal page Trisha Silverman on Facebook and then I'm also on Instagram, LinkedIn and Twitter, but the main place to hang out with me is on Facebook and I love my Facebook friends, so please join me there and um it's great to always meet new people. I have a little saying and I read this somewhere in Cape Cod and the saying was um friends are like seashells. I collect them along the way. And I just, that saying resonates with me that I just love to meet new people and make new friends all the time and then stay in touch with them. So, uh, so Facebook is where you can hang out and we can meet. And then also my website is www.trishasilverman.com, T-R-I-C-I-A-S-I-L-V-E-R-M-A-N.com. Um, so that's, you know, and then my book is on, uh, main place to find it is on Amazon right now. All right. Well, there you go, everybody. We're going to make sure and have links to all of that in the show notes. Get in there, follow her on Facebook, get on over to her website, and of course, get into Amazon. Yes, I will have links for all that. And, uh, oh my gosh, just thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on here. I think people are going to love this episode. Jason, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Like I said in the, in the, when, when we chatted earlier, I just think you're, you're such a warm and kind person and you have such a great voice to listen to on a podcast. So I wish you the best. I can't wait to share your podcast with my friends and, um, keep doing the wonderful things that you're, you're doing. I, I love the premise of your show and thank you for having me on. This is, this has been so wonderful. Oh, you are too kind. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for me to step aside. Uh, no cigar and alcohol for me today. I'm going to have my water and I've got a banana <laughs> and listen to our, today's guest, Trisha Silverman with Healthy Dividends, Investments in Nutrition, Movement, and Healthy Habits that Pay Off. So today I'm reading Chapter 3 of my book, Healthy Dividends. Chapter 3 is Reducing Sugar. Limiting your sugar consumption is one of the best things you can do for your health, literally from head to toe. You'll lower your risk for many chronic diseases, including diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. You're also likely to reduce excess fat on your body while improving how you feel and think. Sugar and chronic diseases. Recent research indicates that sugar can have serious effects on your brain. It may increase your risk for Alzheimer's, and it may also affect the hippocampus area, which is associated with memory. It may decrease your brain volume. Sugar also rots your teeth and can diminish the effectiveness of your immune system. A participant in one of my programs told me about being alarmed by a wound that wouldn't heal. She read up on refined sugar, cut it out from her diet, and the wound healed. Sugar also affects our blood. It's associated with the metabolic syndrome and raises blood pressure. 
a notion most doctors don't even know about. Sugar can also raise blood triglycerides and lower levels of HDL cholesterol. That's the H for healthy cholesterol. That's the number you want to see on the higher side, as opposed to LDL cholesterol, which is L for lousy, and that's the number you want to stay low. A junky diet with too much sugar can lead to diabetes. Uncontrolled diabetes can be devastating and lead to neuropathies, which is damage that affects the nerve endings in your eyes, toes, and other parts of your body. During a clinical rotation of my dietetic internship, I learned about debridement, a procedure I had never heard of until then. A patient with advanced diabetes had a wound on his foot that would not heal. The odor that results from debridement, which is scraping away the damaged tissue, is an unforgettable stench that you never want to have to smell in your life, ever. Unfortunately for this poor soul, this procedure was unsuccessful and they needed to amputate below the knee. Experiences like this helped me clarify my conviction that I wanted to help people way before they found themselves at this end stage of health. I wanted to work with people to help them understand the dangers of eating poorly and the benefits of making good choices. Sugar and your waistline. Sugar can widen your waistline, which puts more pressure on your knees and joints and is associated with gout. I met an attendee at a health fair who held a prominent position in her town. She was in her 70s and had lost over 20 pounds simply by giving up sugar. This demonstrates the hidden impact sugar can have on your diet and waistline, but it also shows that you can lose weight at any age, especially when you find the source of your weight struggles. Another person I met in one of my employee wellness programs cut out after-dinner desserts, often a big source of sugar, and went from pre-diabetes to no sign of diabetes at all. She shared that a bonus is that her clothes fit her better particularly in the belly area. This is a sidebar. Limiting sugar helps to reveal your muscles. I followed your advice about the sugary drinks, and this year I lost five belt loops. This is what Josh Robinson, an online fitness coach from Collierville, Tennessee, told me when I saw him at the 2018 Atlanta SCW Fitness Education Convention. I had first met him at the same conference the previous year when he attended one of my sessions titled Sugar Shockers and Shakedown. Josh is a former police officer, and even as a personal trainer, he still loved honey buns, Reese's Pieces, and sugary drinks. He decided to give up most added sugar for 12 weeks. For the first two weeks, he had lots of sugar cravings. His mouth was watering, and he was dreaming about honey buns. To help get him through, he carried a lot of fruit around with him to eat when he craved something sweet. He drank two glasses of water two to three times per day. His craving stopped in three weeks. Along with sugar, he avoided fried food, bread, and alcohol. In 12 weeks, he lost 10 pounds and four belt loops. He noticed he had fewer headaches, relief from his bursitis, increased energy and attention, and less frequent mood swings. Fast forward one year. Josh hit a couple of bumps along the road. His dog died, and the emotional toll made it harder for him to stay focused and disciplined. He slid back into his old habits and gained back some of his weight. Josh decided to do a wellness challenge, along with his personal training clients. This time, he gave up sugar and processed foods, while incorporating 30-minute workouts three to five days of the week. As a result, he lost 25 pounds and five notches on his belt in just over eight weeks. His muscles became more defined, particularly noticeable in his abs. His results show that when looking to improve muscle tone, it's essential to combine both exercise and a decrease in sugar consumption to get the best results. When I spoke with him after his initial weight loss in 2017, he mentioned that although he dropped a whopping array of processed foods and sugar from his diet, he was still drinking one energy drink per day, which had added sugar. The following year, as a result of our conversation, he gave that up too. Here are Josh's before and after pictures demonstrating the success of his most recent wellness challenge. So in the before picture, Josh looks great. And he looks great in the after picture, too. 
but you can see the difference in his belly area and his arms and the definition between the two different pictures. How much sugar to eat? Now, before you run from fruit because it has sugar, remember that eating fruit is one of the investments that will give you phenomenal healthy dividends, including cancer prevention and immune protection. Any fad diet that tells you to stop eating fruit is doing a disservice to your body and immune system. It's the added sugar that we need to avoid, not the sugar in whole foods, such as fresh fruit. As mentioned in Chapter 2, the American Heart Association has given us helpful guidelines for managing added sugars. It suggests that women limit their added sugar consumption to 6 teaspoons per day and men limit it to 9 teaspoons a day. I recommend setting your limit even lower than this. Why? First, because it's pretty clear that added sugars can quickly add unwanted weight, but also... If you are taking in significant amounts of added sugar, that most likely means you're consuming more processed foods, too. We've discussed all the unhealthy ingredients can come along with these types of foods. For many people, the more sugar they eat, the more they crave it. Watching your added sugar intake in teaspoons is a great way to start paying more attention to your diet. Remember the quick calculation to figure this out? To get teaspoons of sugar in a serving, take the number of grams List it on the label and divide this number by four. The resulting number tells you how many teaspoons of sugar are in a serving. I recommend aiming for three teaspoons or less of added sugar per day. Occasional indulgences with higher amounts of sugar can be planned as part of a healthy, enjoyable life. The key is to keep it low most of the time. I have a chart in the book titled Other Names for Added Sugar. Here are some examples. Brown rice syrup. Brown sugar, confectioner sugar, cane sugar, corn sweetener, corn syrup, dextrin, dextrose, evaporated cane juice, fructose, fruit juice concentrates, glucose, high fructose corn syrup, honey, invert sugar, lactose, maltose, malt syrup, maple syrup, molasses, palm sugar, raw sugar, sucanat, also known as sugar cane all natural, sucrose, sugar, and turbinado sugar. Stevia and monk fruit are popular sweeteners that don't add calories and aren't artificial, but I still don't recommend daily use of them. I found that I needed several packets of monk fruit sweetener to get any appreciable sweetness and dextrose, corn sugar, is often added as an ingredient to monk fruit based sweeteners, which means you're still consuming added sugars. And a popular brand of stevia adds sugar alcohol, which can give you an upset stomach or intestinal discomfort. An interesting study found that when beverages sweetened with monk fruit, stevia, or aspartame were compared to beverages sweetened with sugar, they all led to raised blood sugar and insulin after a test meal. Sugar and brain fog. If you drastically cut back on your refined sugar, also known as added sugar, for a few weeks, I bet you will notice how much more clearly you think. I have seen this effect in myself. I am always more productive when my sugar intake is in control. I've surveyed attendees in my programs after the holidays, and they always note how much better they feel when they get back to more healthful eating after the holidays. Sugar-sweetened beverages are also associated with cognitive decline, so giving up the sugar may give you the healthy dividends of preserving your mental functioning as you age and helping to prevent against dementia. Sugar and your teeth. If you're worried about cavities and want strong teeth, avoiding refined sugar is one of the best things you can do. There is a known link between sugar and tooth decay. A healthy diet and regular brushing and flossing should keep your teeth in good condition. Remember the Hunzen culture we talked about before? In addition to having good eyesight, they also have great teeth. Dr. Bannock noted this and attributed it to their healthy diet with no refined sugar. Artificial sugars. Artificial sugars have been associated with cancer in animals. Diet soda, which contains artificial sugar, has been associated with dementia and strokes, as well as with heart attacks. Many people report headaches with the consumption of aspartame. Research has found that people tend to make up the calories they save when drinking diet soda by eating more at meals and snacks. Also, artificial sweeteners 
are so much sweeter than natural sugar that they may affect your taste buds, altering your perception of sweetness. Those healthy fruits don't taste as sweet anymore. I recommend reducing your consumption of artificial sugars with the eventual goal of cutting them entirely from your diet. Common artificial sweeteners, asulfame potassium or asulfame K, aspartame, equal, neotame, saccharin, sweet and low, sucralose or splenda. Sugar alcohols. Sugar alcohols are carbohydrates that are lower in calories because they don't get digested very well. They can upset the stomach and cause a laxative effect, especially if eaten in excess. They often appear in foods whose labels say sugar-free or low sugar. Two ladies from an employee wellness site told me that after working together for over 20 years, they had never experienced the pain and discomfort that followed the shared eating of a bag of sugar-free jelly beans. Your best bet is to avoid these nuisance ingredients. The easiest way to recognize these troublemakers is that they mostly end with the letters I-T-O-L. Here are some examples. Sugar alcohol names. Sorbitol, erythritol, mannitol, isomalt, xylitol, hydrogenated starch hydrosylates, maltitol, glycerol, maltitol syrup, and lactitol. Reduce your sugar and junk food cravings. Cravings for sugary and junky foods often lead to the consumption of these foods, so it's important to prevent and reduce the cravings. The following 12 tips and tricks can help you get through these cravings. Know that giving up sugar gets easier with time and may take a few weeks. 12 tips to reduce cravings. 1. Reduce, limit, or avoid added sugar. 2. Keep tempting foods away and move away from tempting foods. 3. Eat mindfully. 4. Reduce stress. 5. Aim for 7 to 9 hours of sleep. 6. Eat a balanced, healthy diet. 7. Make sure you're eating enough protein. 8. Plan your meals, snacks, and indulgences ahead of time. 9. Eat when you are hungry and don't wait until you're ravenous to eat, plan, or shop. 10. Don't go too long without eating. Eat roughly every 3 to 4 hours. 11. Drink water. Sometimes we think we are hungry when we may just need water. 12. When craving something sweet, reach for fruit. Chocolate craving hacks. Chocolate is a trigger for many people. You may have heard that chocolate contains antioxidants and can actually be good for you. This is true for dark, not milk chocolate. Know that the junky food additive soy lecithin is in almost every chocolate bar on the market. We all know how hard it can be to stop eating things we love, like chocolate, once we start. There are some things that you can try when you get that urge to eat chocolate. These adaptations are meant to help you keep what you consume more healthful and less likely to lead to eating too much. These are my favorite ways to get the taste of chocolate without indulging in candy. 1. Add 1 teaspoon of unsweetened cocoa to hot mint herbal tea. 2. Make energy balls with dates, unsweetened cocoa, and your favorite nuts. Mix in a food processor, adding a little water as needed, and shape into balls with your hands. Place in the freezer for storage. 3. Sprinkle a teaspoon of unsweetened cocoa over organic frozen sweet dried cherries. 4. Add a teaspoon of unsweetened cocoa to your favorite smoothie recipe. Snacking alternatives. The more sugar you eat and the more sugary beverages you drink, the more you will crave sugar. Here are some ideas for snacks that don't have added sugar. I recommend decreasing the amount of soda and diet soda consumed and then switching over to chilled carbonated water, preferably adding a squeeze of fresh lemon or lime to give flavor. Of course, the best choice for a beverage is nature's plain choice, plain water. Here's a sidebar for examples of low or no added sugar snack ideas. Veggies and hummus or guacamole or part skim ricotta or lower fat cottage cheese. Veggies, examples are celery, carrots, cucumber, jicama, daikon, Japanese radish, peppers, broccoli, fennel, etc. Roasted soy nuts or chickpea snacks. Greek or regular non-fat, lower fat, plain yogurt with nut butter or nuts and seeds and perhaps some fruit. Broth-based veggie and bean soups. Kale chips, see a great recipe at joybauer.com. Reduced fat cheese sticks. Hard-boiled eggs or egg whites, 
scrambled eggs or egg whites with spinach, peanut butter or almond butter with celery sticks, nut butter with fruit, nuts and seeds, whole foods muesli cereal with milk, fruit alone or with nuts or nut butter, brown rice cakes with reduced fat cheese, oatmeal with peanut butter or other add-ons. Add-ons could be plain Greek yogurt, cut up fruit, pumpkin pie spice, etc. Nutritious takeaways. Your investment in lowering the added sugar in your diet will lead to the healthy dividends of a lower risk for diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. You'll think more clearly, and if you're looking for weight loss, your clothes may become looser. Here are some key points. Cut your added sugar grams down to zero to three teaspoons per day. Four grams of sugar is equal to one teaspoon of sugar. When you see added sugar grams on the label, divide the grams by four to get the number of teaspoons. Cut down and cut out artificial sugars as they may lead to heart attacks, strokes, cancer, and dementia. Choose fruit when craving something sweet. And that was Tricia Silverman reading from her new book, Healthy Dividends. Oh my gosh, so much great stuff there. Uh, you know, I wasn't lying when I said that I've already picked up the book and uh, I've, I've already dived into it. So make sure you click the link in the show notes for Trisha's book and her website and so much more. Also, look for the networks and sponsors alike. Save yourself 20% on Scrivener going on right now. And hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out next time when we come back with a new author, a new book, and an all-new sample chapter. Hey, take care, everyone. I'm going to see you again real, real soon. This has been a presentation of the Project Entertainment Network.